They've lived a lifetime. Some have had families, others a long career. For hospice patient Robert Marlowe, his lifetime included volunteering at hospice in St. Lawrence County. Today he finds himself on the other side of that work, as a patient. Robert takes comfort in knowing that the time he once gave and now receives is one of the greatest gifts a senior patient can receive at end of life. This organization stands for not leave, living yesterday or living tomorrow, but living in the now. And so we bring that and this community into the now, into the present, and we celebrate it. Ask anybody at Jefferson County Hospice what the heartbeat of the organization is, and they'll tell you it's the volunteers. Sylvia Buddison has been giving her time to hospice patients for over 30 years. Mabel Bretch also has a few years under her belt, and Nora, well, she's just beginning. Nora became um, a little fur volunteer here at hospice um, after I received her as a Christmas gift. And the more staff and family all talked about the possibility of her becoming a therapy dog here. Um, it was a more family discussion and then staff supported us wholeheartedly and they love when Nora comes to work. So we had a big support group and everybody agreed she was the perfect dog for it. Match made in heaven. Part of what these amazing volunteers do is so much greater than we may realize. They are wonderful because they can face the end of life much better than we can. We are feeling bad and we're trying to figure out what we can do to cheer them up and they are so accepting of what is going on to them. And it just makes it so much easier because, you know, they really don't, very few of them talk about death. And we're here to listen if they do, but um, they're so accepting of what's happening to them. Sometimes we do a jigsaw puzzle, or I play cards with them, or sometimes they just wanna talk, and they will ask you questions or talk to things to you that they wouldn't, their family. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you doing today? Good. My name is Bob. Yes, and I'm Mabel. Mabel. Hospice volunteer. Well, I try to ease their depression and their isolation by just being there with them and talking to them and and finding out what they would like to talk about you know the spiritual body is important just like the physical the mental and i think sometimes people are waiting they're waiting for someone to talk to them about their life where they're going to spend eternity when i leave walk out these doors i'm a changed person they change me. Easing depression and isolation for our folks is a really big deal, mainly because in a caregiver's instance, if they have been taking care of their elderly father and for four years, sometimes we get these folks and they're like, I've been the caregiver for years and they're exhausted. and. If they get an opportunity to get out of the house, that is so beneficial for them to like recharge. Sylvia understands this. She's dealt with loss. Her brother, her sister, her father, and her own son all left their physical bodies in her lifetime. This room at Jefferson County Hospice is dedicated to her son. It's an honor, she says, that makes her all the prouder to give her time to those in hospice care. It's very special because um, I mean, naturally, my son was very special. And he was only 28 years old. So, um, you know, uh, so many people come in or they don't know about the room and they'll call me when they get home and say, guess what, I went into Dan's room today. And that really makes me feel good. Down the hall is the family room. That's where Nora struggles to be still for the moment. Nora, come. Nora, come. Sit. Sit. Good job. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Good girl. Stay. Stay right there. But she's not trained for the camera. She's trained to give comfort. And that she does very well. Is there any way I forgot my phone that I could take a picture of her and I together? Of course you can. So when Nora enters a room, um, when there's a patient and their family, I can see 
the patient light up. I can see their faces smile. I can also see their body language just relax and they become almost a puddle of mush because there's a furry little friend that they want to pet and they love that. I'm not sure if Nora understands end of life with patients, but I do know that she understands when to be soft and gentle and when the time is appropriate that she can't jump, she can't run around, she quietly approaches a patient. Volunteerism of any degree is a different part of your life, first of all, because you're giving of yourself and you're not being a paid person, you're being a heartbeat to the community. The heartbeat is strong, it's compassionate, and it shows up with these hands and paws, easing fear, isolation, and loneliness so the person who lived a lifetime moves on. I'd already been with many family members that had passed in my arms, uh, just as I was there at that time. And it, it's a privilege, really. Some people think when they hear hospice, it's so depressing. Not, not at all, not at all. In Jefferson County for WPBS Weekly, I'm Jolene DeRosier.